Okay, so, so like e each day when the dialogue, the three nights he did the whole dialogue at each moment that he was talking to his father, you'd uh, stop shooting, change, no, no, no. No, we did everything in the sequence that we would we were meant to do it in, um, and we had planned for uh, uh, for that day, and um, then on the separate day we did any shots, and really they were to do with the fact that we were not on a low loader, and by we also had planned that be, not being on a low loader, we would do certain things that um, were specific to the dialogue to the father. And uh, my next question is, like, uh, from the decoupage stage, like, for planning of the shots, were they planned? To what detail was your planning for each shot? Was it, did it include, like, uh, uh, very specific, or it was more improvised, like uh, angle of view, specific uh, millimeters of the lens, or uh, was that something that uh, you've seen each camera position, uh, you improvised at that specific moment? Um. The thing with the car is you can only shoot from the front, the, the side, and the back, <laughs> and, uh, and from inside a few times. So there are only so many kind of specifics of this that you can uh, go through. Um, and to do this with three cameras and not see each camera is another. Uh, uh, so really, um, it was kind of, here's a car, there's a camera there, there's a camera. Now, the degrees on a, on a film like this, whether you're two millimeters down or two millimeters up or panned a little to the left or panned a little to the right, make all the difference in the world. Um, you can have a hugely different kind of composition and feel by doing that. Um, and there is no way you can plan that. Um, uh, you just, and it, we did mark a lot of things off, you know, while we're setting up, um, before we, we traveled, we pretty much had a sketch of what angles we wanted to do for that evening. And then we would go around with a viewfinder and a lens and be specific and say, we're changing here, we're changing there. Um, but that kind of right to improvise, I think, was always our mandate. Um, uh, again, you just don't know that film until it starts happening <laughs> and that's the thing about it and you you can't do what you do on a normal film where you shoot a day's work and you get a feel for it and you say okay this we may have planned this way but we're going this way by the end of the first day we'd already shot the film um I, I, it's hard to explain to someone when because i've never had that happen to me before but um uh, you have actually shot the film after um, two days, and after eight days, you've done everything, including pickups, additional shooting, and extra dialogue. Hello. Hello. Uh, please allow me to 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 talk to you about uh, two specific uh, things that I particularly enjoyed on the film. One is the scene that uh, he has uh, near the end of the film. He has uh, he has uh, finished talking with his son, and. Uh, He's, uh, he, he's crying, and uh, I really thought that this, uh, this scene that lost its uh, uh, focus uh, entirely was uh, a great way to interpret his feelings, and I'd like to congratulate you on that. And also I really enjoyed the, uh, the fact that uh, on specific scenes you could some sort of, uh, on the end of them, you could some sort of uh, either zoom out or pull back the camera, so a few shots just getting wider in the end when the, the scene uh, uh, finishes and uh, this uh, gives me, gave me a moment to breathe like, you know, an intermedio and um, it, it, I, I'd like to ask whether this was um, specifically planned and uh, then I'd like to also ask a final and uh, rather technical question. Uh, when using all these uh, RGB WA uh, LEDs, uh, you you needed to to find a way to you know to match the sodium color. So was this uh, has this been matched in uh, in testing, and has it been matched in? Um, uh, how did you do it? I mean, it's not only just monitoring because monitoring can take you to to mistakes. 
and uh, uh, prove that uh, some choices might not be perfect when you're going back to grading. So I'd like to ask, how did you did you manage to it? Thank you. Um, for the first question, uh, one of the things we had set up uh, in the front shot was uh, uh, a slider on the low loader, and um, we did a uh, a one of the kind of runs that we did of an angle for the performance was having a, a slider and my operator would kind of track in and track out and pan off and pan in. And um, some of that we'd planned and we did, we said that we wanted certain bookends so that uh, as a phone call ends, you would kind of do a bookend of going off into the motorway, going out of focus, focusing back in and coming back in, for example. And um, what we had decided is to figure out certain ways and we communicated over a walkie-talkie sometimes um, uh, for this as well um, to just give a variety. We didn't know, we, we knew that they were best used at the end of a phone conversation and going into a phone conversation and that they were best used at the beginning of the film rather than the end of the film because you just don't have time at the end of a film um, to have a reprise. Um, it, and, and that the dialogue at the beginning was a little enigmatic if you don't know much about concrete and you don't know, you know, what do you... So we would give a breathing space, as you said, um, at the beginning of the film um, so that the audience could just take a few things in. And we didn't feel this was so necessary towards the end of the screenplay. Um, so we abandoned that idea because we didn't have a, you know, you especially when you do it once, you've got to say, okay, at the end, I can't do this. I can't go back a second day and do this again. Um, this is what I get. It's more useful to me at the beginning. We also did a version where we took the slider and we just twisted it uh, along uh, for a side-to-side -side tracking shot. Um, and these are tricky shots to do because you're driving at 50, 60 miles an hour. The operator's on a, um, a harness and they've got to do it smoothly. There's no grip pushing you or anything like that. Um, it was to do that eloquently and to listen to me on a headphone is an achievement for an operator. I've got a uh, I, hats off to Simon Baker for it. Um, the LED question um, was absolutely was testing. We did go out, we used those units, uh, uh, we did do it to a monitor, at least with a digital camera you can, um, and a calibrated monitor, that is what you get at the end of the day. Um, we did not mix colors on, on the shoot. We had pre-mixed colors that uh, we had, and we had, we had a kind of desktop, uh, a dimmer board in front of us, and we just knew that that button does this, that button does that, you know. Um, but they were, even the strobing, how much there's a play, et cetera, et cetera, all of that, um, it was almost like a, a, we had, say, 20 to 25 presets of various things, because it also went from sodium to mercury vapor. Um, uh, and we did certain things where we just turn things off, for example, and let it go dark. Um, oh, one other thing I did request is an SUV car in the preparation. Uh, the bigger the car, I thought, would be easier for us, make our life easier. And I also requested a sunroof so that you would get as much uh, interactive lighting as you possibly could. But this was all, we did test with the cameras, with the lenses, uh, with the dimmer board, recorded things and saw what we needed and we made our judgments actually on the drive there and said okay it's that much red that much green save it triple save it <laughs> remember it uh we're going to use that um that's how it worked and lovely work uh, harris Thank beautiful you. Uh, I th one thing that really impressed me was there's, uh, there's a moment at the beginning where he goes to an inordinate, inordinate amount of trouble to remove his boots before he gets into the car. And then later in the back third, she tears strips off him for coming into the house and she has to get rid of the concrete. Yeah. 
off the kitchen floor. <coughs> Did you bear that in mind at any time, given that's part of his character? Because the shooting of that first part was really interesting, with all that lovely highlight off the bitumen and uh, all that stuff. Did that play any part in that small moment of text? Completely. Um, the idea that he goes through all this trouble you know, we really want, I, the, the words are so important, you have to kind of, I think that's why the visuals really have to kind of match those words and give you little details. Uh, how else could you tell the story that this man actually tries his best not to bring all that concrete mm. into the kitchen, um, unless you set it up in a way like that, and an unobvious way, I think, and in a way that says kind of, okay, who is this person and how do we get to know him? Um, but, um, yeah, all those things we try to I I interpret in some way and have a, maybe a contrast, mm. uh, too. I would be curious if, uh, how the actor liked that method of working. Um, Tom because it was very new for him, too. Very new for Tom. Or special. Um, uh, Tom made one brave decision, I think which was not based on ego in the end, um, and on um, understanding what was meant to happen. He stormed into this thinking, I'm going to learn every line, and I'm going to know this play inside out. And we always called it a radio play. We never actually called it a film. Um, uh, and about halfway through the prep, he said, um, Harris, if I use auto cue, will you see it in the windscreen? <laughs> um, and I'm really glad he did. That was a. That's not a. a, a, it's a that, that should be praise that he used the right tool um, to achieve this performance, and he used his voice and his emotion without having to <laughs> bear the consequence of learning the lines. Kenneth Branagh would have learned it all off by heart. That's how he does um, uh, things, but. Um, I don't know if that would be better. Um, that's not my department, for one, but I do appreciate the fact that um, Tom was quite brave with that and, um, and in a way, let go of maybe the ego to claim something um, for the good of the film. It also meant that we went quite fast, Christian, as well, which was really good. We didn't have that thing of stumbling on lines, forgetting them, uh, what do you say, um, uh, we really could do 72 pages a day uh, like that. I think Yanis has a question. Oh. I've got a question for you about um, with the, the other actors and actresses. Um, how was the mechanics of the interaction between uh, Tom's character and them done? Because he's in the car and were they at a, a base somewhere else? Yes, they were. They were in a hotel on the motorway, but everything was done live. So basically, you knew that the phone call would now be with this particular character. They would step into a room with a microphone. It would all be recorded, and it would all be fed to his phone and his Bluetooth. Um, and um, uh, then they would leave that room, and the next actor would come in, and they'd make the phone call live. But it would happen. We wouldn't stop for a new actor. The phone calls would come in one after... Uh, the other. So this really was live, real time, basically. And it does take about this time, an, an hour and a half, to drive from Birmingham to uh, London. I would like to hear your thoughts about uh, how the new technology help us cinematographers to do things like this, to uh, make a movie in a short, tight space. Before that, with the massive cameras, we have to cut the cars in pieces, and <laughs> it was a funny situation. I'm sure that you returned the car <laughs> in, in the same piece. condition, <laughs> almost in the same condition as you received. And that means that uh, we have the possibility to follow life in every uh, dimension, in any aspect. I would like to hear your thoughts about this. Um, Obviously, it did help to choose the right, you know, you do have to choose the right camera and the right tools for something like this. And I choose, chose to shoot this digitally. Um, I actually truly believe I could have shot this on film. Um, I've shot on 800 ASA uh, when Kodak had their 89 stock and 1.9 I've pushed to 1,000 ASA. And um, I knew I could do this on film as well. Um, 
I think in this case, and with a small camera like an Excel, and there are Artons, and there's um, uh, RE235s, which I've used a lot uh, for things like this, I actually find the RE235 smaller and lighter than any digital camera, and better balanced. 